Hey golfers, have you heard what's new in Pengilly? Come play one of over 600 courses and work on your swing utilizing state-of-the-art foresight technology, open by appointment only. Follow our Facebook page, Swan Lake Simulator Golf and Club Repair for information, specials, and monthly tournaments. Welcome everybody to the Tea with Miss McGill show presented by Fortune Bay Resort and Casino. Make plans today to visit our friends up at Fortune Bay Resort and Casino. St. Patty's Day is still coming next weekend. Uh, get up on beautiful Lake Vermilion. Fortune Bay was a, has 172 rooms and a smoke-free resort, indoor pool, full-service marina, RV park, world-class golf, which will be coming up soon. 61 degrees in Grand Rapids right now. Uh, nothing says spring like the tourney ending and 61 degree day. Several dining options, bar and 24-7 gaming. Visit fortunebay.com for details and plan your trip up to Fortune Bay today. It is Puka speaking. It is the star of the show, Coach Reed Larson. You got a lot to say. Long week. Uh, episode 84. We're officially 17 weeks and done now. The boys high school hockey season, huh? Four. 84. You believe it? No. <laughs> and 17 weeks. So, kids, you're kind of wondering. It's about a 17-week grind. Get the boys high school hockey season done. And that's 17 episodes, give or take. Yep. Well, yeah. No, well, 18 because we do a preseason. Yeah. Or, and, uh, yeah so yeah. 18. So now we're doing the postseason, and then of course, this will be our yeah, this will be our interview. last yeah. And we're going to the interview format. So this is our last weekly show. I don't know if we'll get one kicked out in April, but we'll do six for sure from April till October, and then November next year we'll get into the preseason. And we'll we'll do it all over again. Yeah, you know, right on. Yep. So tell your friends, tell your enemies. You're your we're your source for high school hockey coverage up in Minnesota's Arrowhead region. Give us a rating on Facebook. We'd appreciate that. If you have a less Alexa, I tested Alexa this weekend. Alexa, please play the Tea with Miss Miguel show on YouTube. Boom. Alexa, please play the Tea with Miss Miguel show on Spotify. Boom. You got Alexa. She knows who we are. Great way to consume the show through Alexa. Does uh, it work with Siri on an Apple phone? I don't know. That one I didn't try. But yeah, Alexa, try. we got yeah, we got Alexas all over the house. So uh all of them work. It was it was pretty cool. Um, and of course, we're moving towards 800 subscribers across the various platforms. We got a few more this week: Pudster85, Caleb Christensen, Bob Ladela, and my old buddy classmate Josh Sir George. So be just like them. Subscribe today and join America's fastest growing hockey podcast. All right, we're gonna get into all the state tournament coverage. So drill the like button right now. We'll get into the games of the week. Down to state tournament brought to you by Aspire Heating and Control. Your local Bryant dealer, and Bryant is the official heating and cooling company of your Minnesota Wild. Aspire, Aspire specializes in gas, electric, and hydronic heating and cooling systems. For existing and new construction, residential and commercial installations available. Services include forced air systems, boilers, heat pumps, mini splits. They are, of course, licensed and bonded. So give Justin a call. 218-999-5957. 218-999-5957. All right, so everyone saw the games. We're going to kind of get, I mean, saw the games. We'll talk about the games. We want a lot of behind-the-scenes stuff. Like I said, it was a, basically a full week for Coach Reed Larson. We did the show last Monday, and, of course, it's Monday again now. Um, but why don't you just kick it off right with the send-off that was started right here, right? Yeah, right, right, right at the, the gym, gymnasium at the high school. Oh, okay. And it was, uh, oh, end of the day, everybody was kind of anticipating, but that was last Tuesday. A uh, nice little send off there. Uh, not only was it a send off for the hockey team, but it was a celebration. Um, there was a, a wrestler, a Christian Jelly, that had won the state championship as well, that we were celebrating him. Uh, so we got to celebrate a state title. Uh, and then, of course, go right down the line and, and introduce all the hockey guys that are going to be representing our high school in Section 7 in northern Minnesota. Yeah. Uh, down at the Exo Energy Center, so we did that. It was pretty cool. We uh, we had a little send off, and we came down and and had a practice, an uh, hour long practice. Went through a few things, got moving a little bit. Had the guys jump in the shower so they could have a better smelling bus ride on the way down, and uh, and, and it was pretty cool. I don't know if people saw it on social media, but um, uh, there probably was about eight or nine fire trucks that made oh, it. A couple of squad yeah. cars. Uh, in our in our bus right in the middle of all of those it was pretty cool there was a, a couple hundred people that you could see spread out between you know leaving here at Yanmar Arena and through town kind of the bus route was Highway 38 taking a left on 5th Street going right down the main 
you know, parade route that usually, but going the other way. Yeah. Uh, and, and then down and hanging right and right over uh, Highway 169 and right to Highway 2. And we had people, you know, cheering us on with signs and whatnot, literally, you know, all the way down, not, not packed on the sidewalks, but, you know, mostly Highway 38 from here, uh, a couple of people in the mall parking lot, a few down the sidewalks, you know, heading that direction. And even when we got out to La Prairie, we still saw signs and people waving wow. us out way out just before you even get out of, out of town sure. on the other side of La Prairie. So it was, uh, it was, a, it was a nice send off and we still had, a you know, all the fire trucks kind of pulled off when we got into La Prairie, except one was still following us until it got to Warba. So. <laughs> I like so, it. So yeah, well, probably it was the Warba one, but we had oh. uh, we had Warba, we had Grand Rapids, we had Bohasset. Uh, it was pretty cool to get, you know, that kind of support, and uh, you know, this this community loves its hockey, and uh, I won't say that it's better than anything else, or but it's it's just unique in Grand Rapids with with all of the tradition that comes with the quote tradition of excellence here, and sure. You know, it's it's pay it pasted all over the building and everything, and you know you get a chance to see right behind you all the banners that are hanging behind Puka's head, and fortunately we get to hang another one. Yeah, yeah. You do. Unfortunately, we don't get to hang another orange one, but we'll hang a black one that says a fourth place on it. So pretty excited about that. Um, yeah. So that was a send off, and and then we get down there late Tuesday night, get a bite to eat, uh, check into the hotel. And then uh, we we had a practice right away in the morning on Wednesday before the banquet. We got went went over to Egan and and had a practice over there for an hour and ten minutes, hour and fifteen minutes. Got through a, a decent movement, uh, ready to go, and snapped some pucks around and worked on some special teams and and got guys going. And you know, Coach Coach Grant Clapton still in rare form every time. It, there oh, wasn't right. a day where he took a break on guys with expectations, and uh, that's good. It's not that's what you expect at this point from, from a, a great head coach is that, you know, just cause you're there doesn't mean I'm not coaching. Uh, I'm still coaching you. I'm going to still push you. I'm still going to get after you uh, because you want me to. And that's, that's his mentality. And uh, it's what got us where we were at. It's what got us through the next game that uh, we ended up winning. Um, yeah. So then it got into later in the evening, which uh, was pretty cool. I, I'd never been a part of, uh, a state hockey tournament before nor a state hockey tournament banquet and that was pretty cool to be part of that double a banquet they did some they had some q a where the mc uh talked with each coach they brought coaches up and sat and visited it was the two, the two coaches that were facing off against each other oh really opening Not night uh, okay. so for instance you had the head coach from white bear lake the mc in the middle and then you had grant clafton and they were talking about each team and you know about the matchup coming up and, and it was pretty cool it's almost like uh like you see talking with two boxers yeah right right, match, yeah, right you know right. it was it was kind of cool they didn't go chin to chin and push they didn't they no they didn't push no but it was kind of fun because the things they were talking about and um that's a good just idea. some good q a and uh and then they had some some q a with with players that were picked from the team so they asked each coach hey we want to bring a player from each team up to the stage um, you name the player, they got them up there. You know, there were eight players, one from each team, all the way lined across the stage, sitting on a stool. The MC was there. He said, I'm going to pass this hat down. And he passes the hat down, and they each had to pull a question out of the hat and answer that question. And and there were some pretty good responses. There was some pretty good humor. It was fun. And uh, the kids were dressed up neat. Uh, all of the uh, Grand Rapids Thunderhawks had a, a – Pair of dress pants on, a white a white button up shirt, and uh, a nice orange oh, okay, and yeah. black and and white tie. So, all decked out. A lot of the other teams were decked out pretty well too. And uh, yeah, it was good. It was a decent meal, and it was a it was a great time. No, where was that? Was that at it was place? at the Roy Wilk uh, Roy Wilkins Auditorium. Auditorium. Oh wow. Yeah. Okay, sweet. Yeah, it was a pretty good spot for it. There was, they said there was five hundred people in there. Okay, well, yeah. So yeah, it was big. I mean, a, every single team. That was part of the double A tournament, all the players, all the coaches, and then you know, families got invitations to go to that. So the parents of all the kids came as well, too. So Very pretty, nice. pretty, pretty cool setup for everyone. And and you now then it was go time. It was wake up the next morning on Thursday morning. It was game day. Um, and and we got an opportunity to rent some ice time and take ice over at the Tria where the wild practice 
Um, and we took a picture when we were done yeah, that practice cool. right in front of the windows yeah. that, you know, you see the, the St. Paul, Minneapolis skyline in the background, yeah. which is pretty cool. So had that opportunity and um, it was fun. But it, like I said, it was game day. So it was all business from that point on, which we'll get to talking about game day here in a couple of minutes. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah. So what's that rink like? It just it, Well, the rink is, is set up, you know. What floor is it on? It, it's on the fifth, the fifth floor, I think, or whatever it is. It, we had to go up the elevator yeah, at yeah. any rate. I mean, you're street level, you push, and I think it was either the third floor or the fifth floor. You have to go up, and you're there. Yeah. It's kind of cool because when you're at the rink, you can look out the windows down. You can see down to the street or the parking lot behind the building. So, But it, what what else was really cool is when we walked into Tria, before we had ice time, there was a wild player out there skating around. It's Pat Maroon. He was oh, out really? there ripping around and taking some shots, just had his bucket and his skates and his sweats on, but just getting a quick little sweat in. Okay. Sweet, kind of cool, and <laughs> yeah, nice. He didn't talk to any of the boys, or he just got out. You know, it, there was a, a short conversation about a baby. He'd come over and talk to us, and Grant kind of knew uh, somebody there and asked, you know, hey, if he's not busy, have you know, have him stop in and say hi. And um, it, it isn't that he didn't want to. I think at that point in the season, for most of those guys, it was pretty well business. Yeah. He was there. He was gone. Um, did get a chance to visit with them. I know some of the guys were just kind of watching. Them a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. All right. So then back nap time after that. Yeah. yeah. Good nap time. Uh, we, we had the, uh, the eight o'clock, it's an eight o'clock time, but you know, you never start at no, eight. And none of those session. games start, start on time. We got a chance to sit and watch the game just before us, which was Edina and Elk River. And we got a chance to watch a little bit of that game, mainly from the locker room. There's, there's TVs down in the locker room so that you can watch the games and, you know, you poke your head out every once in a while, but you really don't get a good look from down at locker room level. You know, you have to get up and go up into the seats yeah. in order to see it. Um, otherwise, you're standing in the tunnel and you can't see much from the tunnel. But, um, yeah, so we got a chance to do that. We were uh, watch a little bit of that game here and there and then kind of getting prepped. And and the experience of being at the Excel Energy Center is something else. It's it's like it's like trying to get in or out of Fort Knox. It's mm -hmm. it's pretty well security down there you you can't go up or come down without having a lanyard or a wristband saying that you're either a coach or a player um there's no contact with people that are up there and, unless you poke your head out and, and try to sure. reach over the glass otherwise you go underneath the building with your bus you stay under the building okay so you did go inside right yep. outside um okay. and then you you after you play the game you go back into the bus and you're out so Really, you're not going up and, and seeing people that are there, and it's it's kind of an interesting scenario. We did actually have the kids go up to see their parents after the third place game, but you know, you, once you got in the building on Thursday night, uh, get ready to play that quarterfinal game. Once you got in, it was all business. Yeah. So, oh yeah, yeah for sure. So speaking of Elk River, nice to see they never gave up. You know. Yeah. I mean, it was you know, I mean, tough situation for them, but. Uh, you know, it was nice to see. Yeah, that. they didn't quit. And that yeah. says a lot about uh, Coach Ben Gustafson. He's, he's done an excellent job with that team. And the, and be ready if you're in Section 8, Elk River is going to be back. They, yeah. If they're not back this next year, they will be the year after. Their their Bantam team is going to be in the state tournament here yeah. next weekend at Yanmar Arena. And um, their program is moving in the right direction. So I'm glad they're in Section 8 and not in Section 7. Yeah. So what they say, it hadn't been there since like 2000, 2001, something like that. That surprised me. I mean, yeah, I, I can't living remember when the last time was that they went. It was quite a while. Someone remembers in they what? And they might not have been back since then. Somebody remembers that, but they were talking about it on the television coverage. I was surprised at how long it had been since they yeah. had been there. It's tough. They played in Section 7, so they had to deal with, you know, Duluth East or Grand Rapids uh, and, and even um, Andover there for a little bit. And then they moved to Section 8, and they were in Section 8. Did they move last year or the year before? Uh, at any rate, they've been out of uh, out of Section 7 uh, and into Section 8. So now they're dealing with Moorhead. They're dealing right. with Roseau. And good for them. They make the tournament as, what, the fourth or the fifth seed? They make the state tournament from that Yeah, section? something like fourth. Yeah, and, so, and another stat they said on TV was this was the first time, I think, in 22 years, World has not, or Moorhead has not been in the section final game for Section 8. Think about that streak. I mean, that is incredible. Yeah, think about that incredible streak and also think about the, the headaches I'm sure the Coach Ammerman has to deal with now because he didn't make it to the section <laughs> final for the first time forever. It's never ending for a, for a head coach in high school hockey. It's, you know, it's, think about it. It's kind of funny because we we're talking about it today with, with exit meetings with players and it's like, 
you know, Coach Clapton, are you going to be able to rest here now that you took the trip to the state tournament? And he's kind of like, <laughs> I rest for five minutes, and now I'm trying to figure out how to get back. Next You're hungry, time. hungry. He started. Yeah. <laughs> hungry. There's no, there's no break. Yeah. So, what do you remember about the game? Like I said, it's emotional. It's long. Obviously, close game. <laughs> one, you know, essentially a one goal game, um, most of the time, you know. But then they tie it up, and yeah. then we kind of get the. We gotta get the miracle goal. Yeah. I'm well, yelling or Sherbone, shoot, shoot, shoot. That wasn't the play. <laughs> that, Obviously, it wasn't. I he was, actually made a really good decision on that play. There's a lot of players that would have shot that puck, but we'll get to that in a second to talk about, you know, kind of the buildup of everything. And this is some of the things that we talked about before the game. Is uh, Grand Rapids has an impeccable record of going to the state tournament and winning at least winning the first game. I think if you look at all the banners behind us, if I'm uh, missing by one or two. I think there's of all the 16 to 17 trips that they've made to the state tournament. There's only three, two or three times that they haven't won the first game. Oh. Um, so not that's not luck for White Bear Lake. Well, that's, that's the whole that point I'm getting to. <laughs> that's the point I'm getting to is that Rapids has got, regardless of how good or bad or the teams have been, if they made it to the state tournament, they seem to most of the time, 75, 80% of the time, win the first game. Whereas White Bear Lake was on a, 19 previous trips to the state tournament. This was their 20th trip to the state tournament and had never won a quarterfinal game, which means bounce, they're bounced in the first round. Many of those times after being bounced in the first round, they've lost the second one and been 0-2 barbecue and gone. So you, you got to imagine, even though those 20 kids on that roster and that coaching staff right there have not been in that situation before, except for their head coach, he had been an assistant previous. Okay. Um, no one had been involved in those situations before part of those previous trips to the state tournament, but the amount of pressure that those kids feel because of the stories they've heard and going into that, as soon as something goes bad in that game, you start to think, Oh, here we go again. Right. Here we go again. The pressure of having to win that first game. And, um, we kind of use that a little bit on, on the, the side of our psychology side of things for our players. Like, Hey, just so you know, you're going to win this game. You're going to win it. I know we lost to him in January. It was, it was two to nothing. Uh, it was a game where we, we definitely outplayed them uh, and just didn't get the bounces. Uh, so we we're confident that we could get the same effort, but, but maybe the, the luck and the bounces would be on our side at the XL Energy Center. And that was definitely the case. We utilized that psychology piece to give our kids more confidence. Like, Hey, just so you know, this is a statistic that you can look at. This is how many times Rapids has been to the state tournament and has won the first round. This is how many times Wiper Lake has been to the state tournament in the past and has never won the first round. If things don't go right for them in the first period and still in the second period, doubt's going to creep in. Now, I don't know that that actually played into that at all. I think maybe at times White Bear got a little nervous. Um, I do think that they they played their role their top line often. Yeah, I mean they yeah, wrote, they use road a ridiculous amount. And had they won that first game, he might have been extremely tired against the United yeah, the next night because sure, but what well, that's was part of the difference maker why we were able to have some success is we were able to play three lines way more often than they were during the game, and we had guys that were just a little bit more fresh than they were. There were guys that didn't have their greatest night for us, and I won't name those names, but there are guys that didn't play their greatest game, but other guys stepped up and made things happen. But th that game took a, a one to zero lead early in the first period when a, a nice play by Jamison Dwell comes in yeah, wide, right, yeah. makes a power move, beats the guy, and throws a, a puck right up the middle. It's actually supposed to hit the third guy high, and it missed it, but goes right to Will Shimon's stick. The best part of this play – besides the shot, because all Will needed to do was put it on net, What was Kyler Miller in front of their goalie. Their goalie had no idea where that puck was. He couldn't see it. And this is what we did wrong the last time we played White Bear Lake. That goalie is good. Leo Gabriel is a good goalie. Um, we didn't get in front of him the first time we played him. He could see every shot. The first thing that happened after that pass went out to the point is Kyler Miller was right in front of the goalie. He couldn't see. He tried to move. His body was in front of him. When he tried to move the other way, his defenseman was in front of him there. He couldn't see. Puck went right over his left shoulder, and it was in. And um, the building erupted. And I, there's no other feeling better than even for me, who doesn't play the game anymore. And I wasn't even on the bench. 
for it. I was sitting up in the in the crowd watching, is listening to nineteen thousand fans <laughs> screaming their head off after you score the first goal, and he gets to do his little celly all, all the way across. Yeah, that's right. right. <laughs> So that was pretty awesome. Uh, it was a good experience. The rest of the game was kind of back and forth. I mean, it's I think there was domination uh, from Rapids at times. I think we got tired at times, and White Bear had some pushback. Uh, they really got pushed back there at the end of the game when they were able to tie the game. Yeah. Um, and I believe that was on the power play. I can't 100% remember. I'll have to look back. Uh, but, but at any rate, it was just a zone entry. It was a drop pass. The guy drags the puck to the middle and rips it. Um, Carter Casey played a phenomenal game in that game. Played, he played really, really well. Uh, that shot he couldn't see. He, he had two, he had a defender in front of him and another one of our guys trying to block the shot and went right over his uh, his right leg. Uh, like I said, at any rate, it ended up uh, just completely the building just completely erupting and uh, tie game with. Minute something left. Yeah. Um, actually, I take that back. It, it, it was a it was four on four. They weren't on the power play. Yeah. They had taken there a five a minute major because there of a boarding go. call. Uh, Jake Garski got hit board from behind. They were on. We were on the power play for five minutes. It wasn't only yeah. a couple seconds into yes. that power play where we take a penalty yeah. and nullify it's four on four. So that's that's exactly. what happened, and they scored it for a four goal. Uh, but but they come out of the – they score, they come out of the penalty box. We're still on the power play. Um, end of the game, it's just getting up the ice, guys. We're getting tired. And I remember uh, hearing the, just the interview afterwards. It, it was a player at the end of the game. Bauer Murphy is is just about ready to get yeah. off the ice. And Lou Nanny says it. I watched rewatched it back. Lou Nanny says it. Uh, looked like he was ready to get off the ice. And then he turns and grabs the puck and – throws it up to Will Shermon, who thought, well, I'm just going to try to get this puck in. He catches it. And he didn't have any idea there was only six seconds left on the clock. Oh, he did. He catches it. Oh, he's, okay. like, I knew there was I knew. I'm yelling. <laughs> I knew there wasn't I don't know much how, time. I knew there wasn't much either because they didn't show it, but I knew there was a matter of seconds. Yeah, he, he, he could send his interview. I knew there wasn't a whole lot of time, but I I, I didn't know that there was that little no. amount. And he said, I just all I did was just try to put it in a soft area. Uh, to my buddy Nate, and Nate actually made a really high end play. Like hit. This is a kid that normally would have just. I'm just going to try and beat this guy and and drive him. And he actually snuck behind the defender and catches the pass on his backhand, and then comes to his forehand, flying flying down. And what you saw the clock tick down to wasn't the exact time when he scored. The clock said point two something. Yeah, it said zero point two, and. Then after they watch the replay, they do that. They check the clock ticking down as the puck crosses the line. They put uh, 1.6 on the clock. Uh, yeah, I said, yeah. Saw them at that point, you know the game's over. And and actually at that point, that was kind of interesting because I there was a TV timeout after we took that penalty. So it was a five-minute major. Uh, and, and then we take the penalty, and it's four on four. At that point in time, TV timeout happens. I'm like, all right, I'm going to go down to the locker room. I was up on the club level, jumped in the elevator, went downstairs. I'm getting out of the elevator and walking down the hallway to the locker room, and I'm seeing the TVs, and boom, they score to tie the game up. I'm like, son of a gun, I should have stayed and watched. I get into the locker room, and I'm watching on TV, and I'm pacing up and down the tunnel from the locker room to the back of the bench, from the locker room to the back of the bench. Finally, I walked up to the back of the bench, and there's plexiglass right above your head just before you get into the bench. And if I look up and get close enough, I can see the Jumbotron. Oh, sure. So I'm watching the Jumbotron. And actually, the game is going this direction, but I'm watching the Jumbotron go that direction because it's flipped from the TV angle. Oh, interesting. And I watch it and I see Shermone make the pass and I see Garski catch it and boom, Touch pow, it. right yeah. there. And I just blew up. Yeah. And the whole <laughs> building blew up. <laughs> So it was pretty cool to watch it from that angle. Obviously, it'd have been more fun to watch it from the bench, but but that was a pretty cool spot to watch it because I saw the bench erupt, I saw the building erupt, and I was standing about three feet behind the bench. So <laughs> pretty awesome scenario. Um, amazing experience on that first game. Oh, sure, absolutely. All right, let me run through this really quick. Iron Ranger Apparel, Thunderbird Mar, Mall, ODR Swag. We talked about them all year. 
Hopefully you had your ODR swag down at the state tournament. If you are still playing, you got a state tournament this coming week, and this is the place to be, especially you travelers coming up from the cities, Thunderbird Mall in Virginia. ODR, plus they get, I call it the Get Buyers Paradise, got a little bit for everybody. So make sure you uh, pay the Richters a visit. Um, hopefully you took advantage of the 20% sale. That's now over. They did that until March 10th. But um, Iron Ranger Apparel, Thunderbird Mall in Virginia, Gift Buyers Paradise. All right. So then we move on to the semifinal Friday. Of course, you got a tough one. You got, yeah, yeah. I'm against the number one seed in the tournament. Yeah. Semifinal Friday is a place where you, you, you don't get to unless you win the first one. <laughs> you have to get through that first one. It was emotional. It took us into the wee hours. Um, you know, we're not getting out of there until 1130 at night. Get back to the hotel, try to get, you know, pizzas into you or something so that you get something to eat and then try to get some sleep. And and lucky for us, we got a chance to let the kids sleep in a little bit. We didn't skate in the morning the next day. Just uh, sleep in, uh, get a good lunch in them and then and then talk about a later, a later earlier supper so that you know you're not bogged down yeah. before the game and uh, we watched some film in the afternoon uh, we went back and watched the film when we played Edina and we got ripped at the Edina Classic it was a six to a six to two loss back then and it talked about the loss and the goals they scored and and how this goal went in because of this mistake not because of their skill or ability it was us you know, shooting ourselves in the foot here and doing something dumb here and this and that and and guys buying into the idea that if we do things the right way, we're going to be in this game. We need to come out with with intensity. So the idea of that and the preparation for that, the guys were ready to play and you saw it from the get go that, you know, that game started off with actually us getting the first three or four shots on net and, and, and creating pressure early in the game before they actually scored their goal. Yeah. Um, well, that's what your guys' thing. You guys start hot. You yeah, there, hot were, starts. there was a lot of people in the building that were um, excited about the start of that game. And I guess where the problem happened is is just, a, you know, a shot, goofy shot on net, and it ends up in the back of the net, and they take a one nothing lead. Um, but we still had a good game going. We actually had chances after that as well. The first eight to nine minutes of that game, we, we were in it and, and pushing hard uh, going, but then it gets to – the uh probably just a couple of minutes after they scored to go one to nothing um luca roloff gets a puck on his stick um nice little play to the net boom goalie makes a big save uh a minute later luca roloff's back out of the ice again and he catches the puck and this is i believe it was on power play i have to go back and look at it but he gets a shot walks to the middle shoots it from the point pink hits the pipe um, and even another shift after that, Luka Rolov, again, puck is on his stick point blank and he, and he ripped it over the net. So any one of those three point blank chances, if one of those goes in the net and the score is one to one, it's completely different. Now, I'm not telling you that the game would have result would have for sure changed, but it sure would have been a lot more interesting. Oh, sure. If we score to make it one to one and can hang on to that one to one lead or even, you know, okay, maybe they pop one and it's two to one. We go in the locker room, we're only down by one. That that makes the game a lot more interesting. Sure. But we get to, and it didn't even happen until four and a half minutes, but they ended up scoring. Yeah. It was four and a half, they scored the second one, and then boom, boom, two more they score before we go in for the period break. So instead of it being tied one to one or them being up two to one after period break, it's four to zero. Yeah. And they score those three of those four goals in less than five minutes. So it's like, a, it's like a shark that smells blood in the water and they just keep going at you. And, you know, obviously the entire second period, we played a decent shutdown hockey, we did a nice job of blocking shots. I, somebody needs to check Alex Salisbury after the weekend is over and how many block shots he had. It was unbelievable. Kylo Miller blocking shots all weekend long. Uh, that's the type of shutdown that we did in that second period. And we're on our heels. They had a lot of offense coming at us and a lot of power coming at us, but um, yeah, there was a, there was, we weathered the storm and it was still only four, nothing after the period was over third period. They popped one in quick. It was five, nothing, but then we ended up getting two power play goals late in the game. First one by Kyler Miller and the second one um, by Jake Garski. And it's uh, so five to two L um you never want to lose. Nobody wants to, but if you have to lose to somebody, 
I guess the state champion team is yeah, the one that, a fight. Yeah. yeah, is the one that I guess is gonna make you feel a little bit better at the end of the day if a team that wins the state championship was the team that knocked you out. Yeah. All right, so now let's move on to the third place game because like I said most people saw the first two, not as many people got to see the third place game. So tell us about that one. Yeah, that, that was interesting. It's it's always hard to to go into that game. And there's been a lot of talk about this over the years is you know, it's a tournament. Do do the teams continue to keep playing games, even though, though there's no chance at winning the championship? Does a third place matter? Um, to some people, they might say, well, it's only third place. Who cares? You know, but uh, it's hardware. And yeah. we we kept trying to make sure we talk about, hey, there you hang a banner for third place. You you bring home a gold, you bring home a bronze medal with a white ribbon on it. That's third place. You know, that it's it looks a hell of a lot better than fourth place does, you know? <laughs> so, so you need to play for this. You need to consider, continue to do what you're doing. It matters. Um, that, that selling point is hard because, you know, these kids have their idea on winning the entire thing. And I see, I see the the difficulties there and, and, and you're also dealing with, okay, well, you know, you're probably playing the game with less guys, um, shorten in the bench a little bit more when you're trying to win yeah. and go through and win the championship. And now you're looking at third place game and it's like, well, we're going to do some other, we're going to try to win. Yeah. There's no question about it, but we're also, we, we care about getting guys in at the XL energy center too. And we got guys in more than we probably did in the first two games, a lot more actually. Yeah. Um, that didn't make a difference in the game um, as far as winning or losing that game against Creighton because we played more guys. I think it was just guys weren't getting in their groove that they're normally getting into. The guys that normally play more shifts and oh, get more time, minutes, yeah. they get in more momentum and get more of a groove going. And when they're maybe not getting as much as they're used to getting, we're getting other guys in, maybe it's harder to get them going. Sure. So at, at any rate, um, we, we ended up losing that game six to three. It was again. It was a four-minute span where they popped three goals in in four minutes. Wow! And so it was ended up six to three, and we scored a power play goal at the end of the game. So it was a six-three game. But um, like I said, it, it just was a, a couple of times this year that happened to our to our team, which I think we're going to go back to the drawing board over the summer and talk about how to weather some of those times where you know we're on our heels. How do we stop this? How do we keep from that? keep that from happening and um that's going to be some let's go to the drawing board on some of that stuff but at any rate guys battled and they they played with heart and they, the experience of playing at the XL energy center for these kids if if that doesn't light a fire yeah, in the guys that are coming back next year like hey you have a legitimate chance to to try and do it again yeah and not only try and do it again but you want to win it when you get a taste of being there and, and winning that first game and solidifying the fact that you get to play all three of your games at the XL Energy Center, that, that's one step. The next step is now you want to win the whole thing. Close it out. Yeah, yeah win the whole thing. So, it, like I said, unbelievable experience as a coach. Even though I wasn't on the bench during the games, I got to be on the bench for the warm-ups. I got to be on the bench for the lineups. Um and then coming in at the end of each period and, and seeing guys out onto the ice at the beginning of each period, it still it gives you chills. It, yeah. It's everything that any kid or coach could ever dream of. It's all of it and more. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And great year. I mean, what do you, you know? Yeah. You know, you know, I don't think, well, I don't know. Do we, do we talk about the preseason show? I don't know. Was anybody picking you guys to come out of this? I can't even remember. But, I don't think you know, anybody picked it. Yeah. I mean, and, I think, the expectation of who was going to go to the, the state tournament from our section, uh, I think if you had to ask people, 90% 90 of them or 95% of them would have said Andover is the team that's going to go. Right. Um, I, yeah, I so think we uh, we fooled a lot of people this year, and I think we made a lot of people eat crow this year that uh, are going to make them think twice about who they're picking next year. Yeah. <laughs> well, and a, and a sophomore, so the sophomores last year, freshmen, Bantam AA tournament, now they got some state tournament experience, come back next year. As juniors, I mean, you got a lot to, you know, you got a lot to look forward to. Yeah. And the, and the juniors become seniors. And so you got all that in your back pocket. So, so congrats. Thank you. Yeah. Thank Anything you. else there? No, I, I just, uh, kudos to, um, to our head coach Grant and to our assistant coach Wade and, and Steve and everybody on our staff, Dale and Coop and, um, and PD with our goalies that uh, done such a phenomenal job with, with the team this year. Uh, 
Grant was named um, Section 7 AA Coach of the Year, and, and Wade Congrats. was named Section 7 AA Assistant Coach of the Year. So oh, wow. pretty okay. cool honor for those guys, and, and they deserve it. Um, like I said, you can't say enough about the, what was done this year with with that coaching staff. Phenomenal to, to be able to work with them. As, as long as those two guys want to have me a part of what they're doing, the answer is I was going to be yes until they want to get rid of me. <laughs> All right. Awesome. Congrats. All right. Smash that like button. Uh, we'll get into scores and more. Uh, the Ring Sports Bar and Grill, just on from the Hockey Hall of Fame. Use your gift cards, breakfast, lunch, dinner, full bar, full menu. It's Lent, so there's Friday fish fry available. Daily specials, hockey-themed establishment, 248-8582 if you want to give them a call or you can go to the ringsportsbarandgrill.com and order online. And, of course, we are at the end of the season here. You're going to plan that banquet. They got the breakout rooms, any function, any banquet. Put them on the list, Ring Sports Bar and Grill, 248-8582. All right. We can get into a little bit of Mr. Hockey, a little bit of Brimsec, um, about the Reed Larson Award. But anyway, uh, so Hagen Burroughs, Mr. Hockey, what do you know? Do you know anything about him? I know he's pretty good. <laughs> I don't know. It's, they had how many guys up for three, three of them? I, I thought I was a little surprised because they had the three. Yeah, you know. Take your pick. I mean, I, I feel like I feel like if they end up going to the state tournament, they're probably going to pick somebody else. Uh, that seems to happen quite often when it comes to um, Mr. Hockey. They, they don't always pick the guy that went there. to the state tournament or the guy that won the state tournament. So I feel like, all right, well, and maybe it was picked before the state tournament. I don't know. He's a good pick. Yeah, okay, yeah. Okay. I just have a hard time talking about right now, talking about anybody from Minnetonka, nothing against the community or the coach or whatever. I just – they had nine D, – nine, or 11 D1 commits on the team, whatever that nine, goofy yeah. number is, nine of them. Um, and they were undefeated all year until the section yeah. final, and they lost to Chan Hansen. Good for Chan Hansen. Yeah. That's yeah. all yeah. I can yeah. say. Yeah, Chan had a great year. Yeah, they did. Yeah. And making it to first, the to first state championship ever, right? game. First yeah. trip ever for them. Yeah. yeah. So. yeah. I, I don't have anything to say about the Mr. Hockey pick. It was kind of like, oh, okay, whatever. Okay. I'll tell you who I thought was really good watching that entire tournament was the kid from Chan Hass and Newland Camp. Yeah. Was was really good. Really good. So he's got a future. Yep. Right. He's got a future in the game. Brimsek went to you know? clearly it, it went to the goaltender from Chan Hass. Okay. Uh, and that's what's kind of you kind of yeah. made that comment last week. That's yeah, he he was unbelievable. Unbelievable. Watch him play that quarterfinal game. He closed the door hard. In that quarterfinal game, I think they ended up getting one by him in the second game. Um, and then it was just you're dealing with the Hornets yeah. in the third game. Yeah. But he, he had already been chosen before that tournament anyways. And if he hadn't been chosen before that, which he did, uh, he would have been would have picked been, yeah. because of that yeah. section final win of Minnetonka. Yeah. Like he was unbelievable in that game. Um, and it was real similar in watching him in that that um the next game, the second game, the semifinal game, yeah, the state okay. tournament against the uh, Cretan. Cretan, yep. All right, then the Reed Larson. I haven't heard who won that. You, you? Okay. no, I, I, I didn't. By the way, that is not named after me. <laughs> um, it's named after the guy that I was named after. Yeah, exactly. And I, it's interesting because there was a guy that came down to it was before the third place game, and I, I guess I wasn't really, I couldn't hear everything he was talking about, but. There was a guy who came down, and I was down on the bench during warmups, and just before the third place game, and he comes out, walks down with the glass, and he peeks through. There's a little crack in the glass. He's like, "Are you Reed Larson?" I'm like, "Yeah, I'm Reed Larson." And he starts talking to me, and hey, I'm so and so from here and here, and I'm like, getting a little bit closer into this conversation, going, "You're not talking about me, are you? You're talking about the other one." And he's like, "Oh yeah, you know me, I'm yeah, Roosevelt, and I know this guy and that guy," and he's like, "I got a house up on Deer Lake and Grand Rapids, you know, and he should come over for a cocktail one of these times when I'm up there." And I'm like, "Yeah, I'm not going to get into this, yeah. but I just let you know, I'm not that Reed Larson." Yeah, I'm not um, Reed Larson. Thank you for yeah. thinking that my slap shot was as hard as his. But um, now that is funny for those that don't know the story that you know when you have when your name is Larson and you're a hockey family and my grandfather knew this going into it, that if you have a boy, one of those boys, since this is a hockey family is going to have to be named Reed after this guy. And my mom's like, hey, doc, that's not who I named him after. 
Yes, it is. My grandpa would have said, yes, it is. My mom would have said, no, there's this other person that it was named Reed with the last name Larson that I really liked and blah, blah, blah. Um, I will claim what my grandpa says. My mom will claim something else. <laughs> um, but yeah, that, that's, that's, that's the story. When, when your name is Reed Larson and you play hockey, then you're named after that guy. Yeah. That's all there is to it. It's tricky. He had the hardest slap shot ever, by the way. John Stout. Stout. Minnetonka. Weird. So, yeah. So there you go. <laughs> all right. So two from Minnetonka. Two from Minnetonka. Yeah. So, okay. all right. So our streak uh, for of uh, two one eighters too, winning the uh, Mr. Hockey. Was uh, it four in a row? We have uh, Biondi, Biondi, Peart, Peart, Shogs, Shogabi, Max Strand, Strand. So yeah. we had four in a row. Yep. So. Streak is over. It's over. Does that mean that the cities has to win it two years in a row, or can we pull uh, someone from the pull, north? We're going to pull it off next yeah, year. We're going to have to away. pull someone from the north. <laughs> All right. So just some uh, other tidbits here. I made a mistake, a correction last week. Hibbing, I said, has three state tournament wins. They only have two. Um, I got a lot of positive feedback, though, on uh, my three little, state my tournament little, wins. Yeah, it was Hibbing only has two. They don't have three. Fif 1952 and 1973. I said they had, uh, they had three, but they only have two. So my correction there. Uh, contrary, I want some of you to think about this over the summer. Warroad uses markless pucks at the gardens, and I guess they feel a little different. If anybody, we're, we're going to talk about this more next year, maybe even this summer when we go to the interview format, but I was not aware of that. There's such thing as a markless puck, but we're going to dig into that a little bit. If you have any info on that, please let us know. And then a few congratulations here. The Pee Wee B1s from Grand Rapids heading yeah. to the state tournament next weekend. The 12U8 team from Grand Rapids heading to the state tournament. And the 15U girls head to the state tournament. And also the Rock Ridge Bantam Bees down in Proctor next week for their state tournament. Congrats to Coach Tara Gow, who's a fan of the show. He sent a little stat. He said the last couple of teams from the Rock Ridge area, 2016 Bantam A's and the 2011 Eveleth, excuse me, Virginia Bantam A's back in 2016 and the Eveleth Bantam B's back in 2011. So it's been a little drought. So congratulations yeah. to the Rockbridge boys. I remember that Bantam A team, that Bantam A team. Then, of course, those guys were on my team the next year in 17 and 18. My cousin was on that team. Oh, really? Cade Moreland was on that 16 okay. team. Uh, Sites' his kid? Sites was not younger? on that little team. Younger? He was he was a ninth grader on my high school team. Now, oh, okay. So okay. didn't get a chance to go there. But Chris Weston and... Um, Freely, Freely, and Freely were coaching. Oh, that. really? Jim Zupins. Okay, we're coaching it. So go get them, Rock Ridge, and then just if you're looking for some hockey, you know, I do see the temps kind of fade. You know, giving a week like ah. the weekend, uh, we're highs in the 30s, but the Bantam Double A State Tournament will be right here at Yanmar, um, and uh, we're gonna have the luxury of uh, we get to MC, gonna MC the banquet Thursday night over. Apparently, at, uh, somebody watches our show and says these guys these can guys. talk for an hour. <laughs> Let's get them to talk. So Kill some time and kill, kicking some ideas around, and uh, well, maybe someone can get a little bit of a record going on that one. Maybe someone can record some of the stuff we're doing. I think we got some pretty cool ideas yeah, of MC, and we'll do some interviews. We'll do some Q and A with some players and some coaches. We'll tell some jokes. We'll giggle and laugh a little bit, and then send them off onto their way of uh, yeah. the next Bantam double a state champion. Yeah. yeah. So if you're playing this weekend, good luck and congratulations on uh, making it this far, right? Middle of March, still playing. All right. That's it for episode 84. Anything to add? No, just that uh, it's, it's great. We're, we're wrapping up uh, the end of the high school season here. Uh, we will be getting into our interview format here over the course of the next couple of months. Like we yeah. said at the beginning, we're still kicking around ideas of of who we want to bring onto the show. Obviously, they're hockey related, um, but many of those people we bring on have great stories. So, if you think you got a good story and you like the idea of being on the show, don't be afraid to send either one of us a, sh a exactly shot or a right. text message or an e email. And say, hey, you know, I'd be up for an interview. Blah blah. Yep. We tend it. to do that. We tend to listen sometimes. Um, but at any rate, those are some of the, these shows are phenomenal during the season, but those interviews are really cool because we get to interact with other people and, and yeah. get more people excited about when the season starts and we get our, our actual in season going. Yeah. Yeah. That's fun. Like I so said, the stories are fun and, you know, we've had, you know, everyone from Mike Antonovich, that's what 70, probably about roughly 70 years yeah. old. Sorry, Mike, I'm saying you're somewhere there. And we had, what did we have last year? The, the Hibbing Peewee team, those kids yeah. were. 
12 and 13. So we you know, got a lot Grant on there last yeah. year before Coach, Grant was Clapton, coach. Yeah, coach Clapton. I mean, we've had, we've had a lot of fun. Bliss Littler. Bliss, you know, Bliss yeah. Around junior. If you're a junior hockey person. John you Garver. Chisholm Nader. Garve was a great yep, one. Yep. I mean, I think that's still our most most watched episode ever was that, Garve. So a lot of stories. A lot of stories. He's a he's a directory of hockey up here. So that was that was a great one. So we got a few that we're we're kicking around. Yeah. All right. So please comment. We appreciate that. Goat Sports Media, LLC at gmail.com. If you want to contact us privately, if you have an idea of someone we should interview, hammer the follow button, hammer the like button, uh, T with Miss McGill, or excuse me, T McGill on X or Twitter. T with Miss McGill, Instagram, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and the Musi app. If you're looking for us on Facebook or YouTube, Goat Sports Media, LLC at gmail.com. Or excuse me, <laughs> Facebook or YouTube. It's been a long year. Facebook or YouTube, it's Goat Sports Media, LLC. Excuse me. Uh, merch, we're really low. Um, got rid of some merch up in White Lakes when I was cool. playing this weekend. But uh, 20 bucks for a tee, uh, 45 bucks for a hoodie, Cash App, Venmo, PayPal, all that good stuff. And of course, the greatest sponsors on Earth. We, Earth, we want to appreciate uh, and thank them: uh, the Ring Sports Bar and Grill, Iron Range Apparel and ODR Apparel, Fortune Bay Resort and Casino, Spire Heating and Control, Iron Range Goalie Academy, Academy, and Team Minnesota Hockey. And of course, special thanks to everyone at Gold Sports for another great season. We'd love to be back. We're going to be back. We appreciate everything there. Uh, so far, Reed Larson, I am Puka. Get out there and be your dream. Your tune to Tea with Miss McGill Show. <laughs>